subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Okay, so uh, now we are going to look at a question. So they have given us some systems and they are asking you to check linearity, time invariance and causality of the signals. We have already looked at the rules of the procedure to check all of these. Now uh, we are going to look at them again and see how these two signals are different, which signals are going to be linear, which signals are going to be time variant. So we are primarily concerned with linear time invariant and causal signals because only those uh, systems sorry, because only those systems can be mathematically modeled, they are only, we are only interested in linear time invariant and causal systems. So look at the first part. We are going to start with linearity of the system. So to check linearity we need to check two principles which need to check homogene homogeneity of the system and superposition of the system. So I am checking homogeneity first. What does homogeneity say? That if you are multiplying the signal with a, a constant, any constant A, suppose I consider the signal multiplied with A as x1, so this should become axt whole square because the system, uh, this signal has square in it. So when I am multiplying the signal with a, it is going to become a square x square t. When I multiply the output, output with a, it is going to become simply a x square t. Now since this, this square did not occur in this output, the system does not follow homogeneity, does not follow homogeneity. So it is going to be non-linear system. If a system fails either of the two, either of homogeneity or superposition, in uh, both the cases the system is going to be non-linear. Now we are going to check time invariance. What do I do for that? Uh, so again I am considering the time shifted input as x1t which is going to be x square of t minus t naught. y1t is going to be y of t minus t naught which means replacing this argument with t naught which becomes again x square t minus t naught. Since both of them are same, the system is going to be time invariant, time invariant. Uh, now checking causality of the system is very easy since the system uh, depends on values of present only, only on t values, present values, so the system is going to be causal. Causal. So the given system is non-linear, time invariant and causal system, right? Non-linear, time invariant and causal system, okay. Look at the next example now. So this is the procedure basically which we are going to follow for all the examples, okay, to check the linearity, time invariance and causality. So. Uh, for this system, I am considering uh, homogeneity as well as superposition at once. So what do I do in x1? I multiply this signal. So this is going to become e to the power axt. I am considering one more signal which would be a a2 x2t. Okay, this is x1 dash x2 dash. Now if I consider their input combinedly, if I just uh, try to apply them at once the output is going to be okay the output should be the output for them should become e a1 x1 t plus e a2 x2 t this should be the output y t now if i apply a x1 t plus a x2 t here combinedly the output is going to be y1 dash t or whatever you say the output y dash t is going to be e of a1 x1 t plus a2 x2 t right which is not the same as this one okay uh, otherwise also okay uh, if you just check homogeneity of this signal if you just check homogeneity if i'm multiplying this with a this is going to become this is going to become e to the power a x t if you multiply the output with a it is going to be a into e to the power x t which is not same this signal does not follow homogeneity so this is going to be a non-linear system, non-linear. Okay, to check time invariance, what do I do? Firstly, I am going to shift the input. So this is going to become e to the power x of t minus t naught. If you shift the output, 
shift the output means just changing the argument by t naught this is also going to be e to the power x of t minus t naught which is same so this system is time invariant time invariant also since it depends on t values only present values only signal is going to be causal causal right look at the next part so i'm checking homogeneity first if i just multiply the input with a this is going to become at into xt now if you multiply the output with a again it is going to be at xt now if i uh, want to check superposition what do i do i take one more input okay uh, i consider one more input x to t which would be 18 to x to t so this is i am taking as x1 right this is x1 dash x2 dash now their combined output must be when i am applying them combinedly their output is going to be t into c this is the signal only okay we can replace this uh, with the corresponding signal so it is going to be a x1 t plus a x2 t plus a x1 which is actually the sum of their individual outputs uh, anticipated outputs so the system is going to be linear since the system follows both superposition and homogeneity this system is going to be a linear system okay if you just check time invariance for the signal uh, for the system time shifted this input is going to be t into x of t minus t not see this t does not get affected why because we are only making changes to the input the only the argument of the input only this independent variable of the input is going to get shifted by t not so this is going to become t into x of t minus t not we are not going to change this but when i make changes to the system to the output when i shift t from this output all the arguments all the t variables in this are going to change getting going to get replaced with t minus t not so this is going to become t minus t not into x t minus t not clearly both of them are not equal so the system is time variant this is not a time invariant system okay this is going to be time variant system also uh, since the system values depend only on the present values this is going to be a causal system causal in nature right look at the next part now we are having et into x to uh, xt so now i am going to check uh, homogeneity first x1 t is going to be a into et into xt see uh, the input is this one xt only okay we are not concerned with this e to the power t so when i multiply this signal with a this is going to be it what is y1 t going to be if you multiply the output with a it is going to be a into it is power t x t so the system satisfies homogeneity now we are going to check for superposition if i consider one more signal the output is going to be a e to the power x to t now if i apply both of these scaled signals simultaneously the output should be e to the power t only x t gets replaced right so this is going to become a x 1 t plus a x 2 t which is also the addition of their anticipated output separately so the system is linear since the system follows both superposition and homogeneity this is a linear system now to check time invariance what do i do i make changes i shift the signal in input first so this becomes et into xt minus t not right this is going to be the time shifted input signal this is not going to change because we are not including this we do, we do not include this this is not a form of uh, part of the input okay but when you change make changes to the output when you shift the output all the t values here get replaced with t minus t not since both of them are not same this is going to be a time variant system time variant and also causal because depends on only present values of the causal system so this is also going to be a linear time variant and a causal system okay now look at the next part so we are given with real part of xt we are considering real part of xt so we are going to check the homogeneity of the uh, this signal first x1t see uh, i am multiplying uh, this x1 
this signal input signal with a constant a so this is going to become real part of a x t fine if i multiply the same constant with this uh, output in the output it is going to become a of real part of x t now see these two are not going to say uh, be same if a is if a is a complex number suppose a is a complex number then real part of a x t is not going to be the same as a into real part of x t this this function is going to contain some complex values okay whereas the system is going to contain only the real part of the function so both of them are not going to be same if a is a complex number right so this is not this is not following homogeneity so this is going to be a non linear system non linear system to check time invariance what do i do i make a shift of t not in the input in the input so this becomes real part of x of t minus t not if i make the same shift in the output it is also going to be the same okay x of t minus t not so this follows time invariance so this is going to be a time invariant system fine uh, now since it depends on only present values so this is going to be a causal system see checking causality is very easy you just look at the argument and see if the output depends on any other values of t other than present or past values okay if it has something of the form t plus t not t square something then we are going to do further investigation right if it uh, contains only t or t minus something we do not need to check it is going to be a causal system only right look at the next part now see this is a important concept just be very careful uh, when you are attempting these kind of questions so we know that differentiation and integration are linear operations still we are going to check it how first we are going to check homogeneity if i multiply something with this input signal this is going to be something like this if you multiply some constant with the output it is also going to be something like this right which is same you know that this constant can be taken out of the integration okay so this is following homogeneity now to check superposition i am considering one more signal x2t okay this is a1 a2 uh, right so what do uh, when i am going to apply these two signals uh, uh, combinedly to this what is the output going to be output is going to be so we know that if there are two uh, functions inside integration in addition we can just separate integration right so this is going to be a1 x1 t plus a2 x2 t into dt now you know that when you've got some in uh, integration of this one you can just separate them with separate limits you can take this out right you can just perform this kind of operation which means which is which is also the uh, addition of their individual outputs so this system is going to be linear linear now to check time invariance of the system see uh, we need to be a little bit careful when che we checking time invariance of the system how see what do i do first i'm going to make a shift of t not in this signal in this input signal which is going to make it x1 t is going to be minus infinity to t x of t minus t not dt now if i just try to make change this argument i'm replacing it with some new constant u theek uh, hai okay so if i partially differentiate this equation du is going to be equal to dt that is i can replace the dt with du uh, right away now what happens to the limit okay these were limits for t now i am going to find limits for u how do i do this i am going to put values here okay now what are going to be the uh, limits let's see if i put the lower limit here when t was minus infinity u is going to be minus infinity only why because you are subtracting minus t not with minus infinity is not going to make a difference so lower limit is going to be minus infinity upper limit was t now what is going to be the upper limit for uh, u if i put t here upper limit i am going to obtain as t minus t not using this equation only i have obtained the limit now the argument becomes u and dt is going to be replaced with du so this is my x1 t now if i try to shift the output if i try to find y1 t that is t not shifted version of y t what is going to happen what 
yes right why did they we did not make a change here see actually the function here this yt the system here is integral okay we are performing integration we are not con concerned with this input operation okay <coughs> see why am i saying this is if i just write this yt as minus infinity to t x u d u or some x v d v this is also the same thing okay this this argument is not affecting our operation we we write written this as uh, y t because we have limit from minus infinity to 2 this is not depending on the argument of the function okay this is not dependent on the argument of the independent function this is dependent on this limit only we are having t here because the limits were from minus infinity to t so when we are going to make a change to the argument of y t argument of the output if we are going to shift it only limits are going to be affected argument of the input function are not going to be affected okay because this function is equally valid writing this as this one is equally valid now if i ask you what is y t minus t naught is going to be you cannot make changes to u here right you are going to make changes only to the upper limit this is what i have done here now these both of them are equal right these are equal so this function is going to be this system is going to be time invariant yes integration is a see now this integration is time invariant because this is integration from minus infinity to t although this kind of integration is not going to be time invariant okay we're going to look at it right so this this for now is going to be time invariant and since this depends only on past values of t we are taking values only from minus infinity to t from uh, to uh, for till uh, the present value of t so this is going to be a causal system so is not depending on any future values right so this one is an uh, important one you can just keep in mind this integral is a linear time invariant system okay now look at this one so uh, since this integration was linear this is also an integration just limits are different so it is going to be linear we do not need to check it again now we are going to look at its time invariance see uh, if i make changes to okay if i just make shift in the function this is going to become x of t minus t not dt i am uh, performing the same kind of operation i am replacing it with t so du is going to become dt lower limit is going to be lower limit is going to be if i place here minus 10 this is going to be minus 10 minus t not upper limit is going to be 10 minus t not so x1 t is going to become minus 10 minus t not to 10 minus t not x u d u if i perform a shifting operation in the output now see this does not depend on the input okay this is a definite integral this is a, a fixed integration of the signal so you cannot make shift here if you just shift this operation this does not depend here so it's going to be the same okay minus 10 to 10 x of t dt or x of u du now see since the limits of the integration are different these two are not same this is going to be a time variant system okay so integration is not going to be time invariant all the time it depends on the limits okay this one is going to be time variant this one was time invariant though now this is also a non causal system why because it is depending on t values up till 10 from minus 10 up till 10 so this is a non causal system it may depend on t values which are which are occurring in future uh, now look at the last part y t is equal to x a t now to check linearity what do i do i am multiplying this with a constant a ok i am taking the constant b to avoid confusion so this is going to b into x a t if i multiplied the output also this is also going to be b into x of a t to check superposition i am considering one more signal x 2 t this is going to be b 2 x 2 a t if i just apply both of them together y t is going to be b 1 x 1 a t plus b 2 x 2 a t right which is also the addition of their individual responses so the system is going to be linear linear system now to check uh, time invariance what do i do firstly i am going to shift this signal uh, by t naught when i am shifting the signal by t naught what happens is only a 
that shift of t naught occurs independently okay this is going to be x of a t minus t naught we are not making changes we have discussed this before also okay changes happen only inside the argument not to the complete argument you are not going to have a into t minus t naught you are going to have a t minus t naught although when you make changes to this uh, output if you shift this in time this is going to be x of a into t minus t naught now see here we are multiplying a with both of them here my a is only with t so this is not the same this is going to be a time variant system time variant okay also the system is going to be non causal why because if a is something less than 1 or less than 0 then this is going to be either a negative number or a fractional number which means you are expanding in time okay suppose if a is 1 by 2 so this becomes x of t by 2 okay so if for uh, obtaining value of x, uh, y at 2 i need to have value of x at 1 which is representing a non causal system non causal system so this is going to be non causal if if a is anything less than 1 right so this is how we are checking uh, linearity time invariance and causality of a system okay